Greetings and shalom again, friends. Thank you for clicking on part two on Mystery Babylon today. And where I left off in part one is we're going to the scriptures to see some clues to help us understand the mystery Babylon today, to see if we have that within us in any way, just to examine ourselves and our faith and I was turning to Revelation chapter 17. In the first six verses, I'm going to read, and then we'll go through some clues. We'll expound upon the clues that we see within these verses. In Revelation chapter 17, again, in verse 1, Then one of the seven angels who had seven bowls came and talked to me, saying to me, referring to John the Apostle, who wrote this, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. And the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Spiritual fornication, of course. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. This is John speaking again. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which was full of the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet, and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And on her forehead a name was written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, Mother of Harlots and of the Abominations of the Earth. In verse 6, And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints, with the blood of the martyrs, of the Messiah. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. Even the Apostle John was amazed with how great this mystery Babylon was, how deceptive it was. In, it, in a many ways, he was, he was marveled, I'm sure. And it will, should marvel us, and it will be very eye-opening to us as we find just how, how great this system is in, in doing what it's intending to do. And so I have ten clues that I found just in these verses alone. And if you found any more, please share them with me. But if, if you're not keeping all ten of our Creator's commandments... I'm sure that you will find some of these clues, some of Babylon that is still within you. And so clue number one is this woman spoken of here is a harlot. In other words, she's a woman trying to look beautiful, trying to look like the righteous woman, the bride of the Messiah, body of believers, and yet... Of course, a harlot is not a virgin woman, is not a pure woman. And so, secondly, clue number two, she is a great harlot. Not some small religious system, not some little sect or group or body of believers, but a great system of beliefs and theology and pagan practices and, and multi-gods polytheism, and so forth. In clue number three, she sits on many waters. Many waters. And what can waters refer to symbolically? Well, if we turn to Jeremiah, if you'll turn to me with Jeremiah, we can see many places in Scripture where water and floods are symbolic of armies. And so notice in uh, Jeremiah 46 and in verses... 7 through 9. Who is this coming up like a flood? 
Whose waters move like the rivers? Egypt, rising up like a flood. And its waters move like the rivers. And he says, I will go up and cover the earth, and I will destroy the city and its inhabitants. Come up, O horses, and rage, O chariots, and let the mighty men come forth, the Ethiopians and the Libyans who handled the shield, and the Libyans who handle the bend of the bow. And so we see here armies, and, and in the end times, we, these could be symbolic of high-tech weaponry that's going to be a much more powerful than, than even Jeremiah could understand and write, and even the Apostle John, as he tries to describe some of this weaponry of these locusts that are iron, and, and they sound like horses' hooves running, you know, like a helicopter. But he didn't understand this technology. So there's coming a time and. And we can read about in, in chapter 47, again, Behold, waters arise out of the north, and shall be flowing flood. Like a flowing flood, they shall overflow the land and all that is in it, the city and those who dwell within. And the inhabitants that of the land shall wail, and at the noise of the stamping hooves, and of his strong horses, and the rushing of his chariots, and at the rumbling of his wheels. And this could even sound like I said, helicopters and tanks and uh, modern weaponry. So we see that uh, many waters, this modern Babylon today, Mystery Babylon, will be riding on armies. And so that's something that we need to take note of. What what uh, religious systems uh, posing as uh, the body of our Messiah would do something like that and fight and kill people? And we're supposed to love our enemies, as our Messiah said. But uh, in, in clue number four is, is kings and nations of the earth, kingdoms, nations of this earth will commit fornication. We will find objects of Babylon. You know what an obelisk is? That was in Babylon, symbolic of the male uncircumcised organ. And you, you find this in Washington, the monument. You can go to Paris and see the Eiffel Tower like an obelisk. You can go to London. And, you know, we, have, we grow up with these things and we have passion for them and we love them because we've become accustomed to them and may have fond memories but our Creator doesn't have quite so fond memories of these things and, and what they represent. And, and look at your money. How about your money? Do you see any uh, pyramids on there? And Egypt didn't start this. Remember, Egypt, this Babylon religion has many daughters. So Egypt is just an offshoot from Babylon. But uh, notice we see these, these symbols and even our money and, and a lot of these governments and... and, and uh, capitals of our countries and and so forth so many kingdoms and nations are are taking in with this spiritual fornication clue number five is uh she's sitting on a scarlet beast with seven heads and ten horns it's empires re revivals of empires daniel talks about revivals of these Babylonian empires and it's not just Christian these are talking about Islamic empires and the Babylonian empires and and the Greco-Macedonian and Greek and and even in modern times with uh, different empires that are more of like an anti-Messiah empires and this woman Though the woman is not the beast, the woman is something different. The woman is dressed in purple and scarlet. And if you look in uh, the Torah, the writings of, of Moses, Moshe, he talks about the temple and, and uh, the purple and the scarlet. Yes, they're colors of, of royalty and worship. And so this woman is posing as royalty and wants to be worshipped. And we got to be careful about this. There's going to be a mark of 